too often I'm labeled as being somebody that's very negative about professional wrestling, especially very negative about the WWE. Well, let it not be said that I can't still find those occasional beacons of light, beacons of hope, those things that actually get me a little bit excited. Now, the cynic in me says that usually when this happens, I end up being disappointed. I believe I said something to that effect about Survivor Series. I was looking forward to that show, and then it happened. Well, of course, part of being a wrestling fan is having the amnesia of not learning your fucking lesson. So I haven't learned my lesson, and that means that I'm excited for another WWE pay-per-view coming up. I'm actually excited for this year's Fastlane. Probably as excited as I will be uh, for Fastlane is crazy because I'll be more excited about this show than I probably actually will be for the biggest show of the year, WrestleMania, next month. Just how it works out. I've actually had my finger on Fastlane for a little bit. It's Raw's last pay-per-view uh, before WrestleMania. Some things that could potentially enter happen here that are interesting to me. So yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the show a little bit. And let me let me tell you some of the reasons why I am. Call me crazy. Or let's face it, you probably don't fucking care. Just clicked on this video for fucking habit. And that's pretty much it. Um but you got Enzo and Cass taking on the ball jobber club for the Raw Tag Team Championships. We could go back to having a somewhat cool, somewhat popular babyface tag team holding the tag straps. It'd be cool to see Enzo and Cass get their moment. Be better, if, more appropriate if it happened at WrestleMania. But I guess you take it where you take it. So I'll actually be curious to see if the WWE would go with this guy, these guys. I think they would, but who the fuck knows? I'm looking forward to the Cruiserweight title match. And what's funny about it is... With the Cruiserweight division, for all the things I've knocked it for, there are a couple of guys in that division that I actually really like to watch. I find interesting. God forbid. Guys that actually have characters and some personalities to go with it. Fascinating concept. Some of the guys in the Cruiserweight division I find much more captivating than the guys that are supposed to be at the top of WWE. But Gentleman Jack Gallagher versus Neville. This has the makings of some old-fashioned fisticuffs of brewing. It's going to be quite the brouhaha. I'm actually looking forward to this match a little bit. I'm a fan of Gentleman Jack Gallagher. And like I said before, I thought Neville should be the face of the Cruiserweight division. He is now, although I thought it should have come as a baby face. I think he's doing the best he can as a heel based off of what the WWE gives him. So in terms of matches that actually have characters that I care about, this match actually probably ranks at the top of the list for me. Because most everything else in this card, I either don't care about anybody, or I only care about one person or one of the teams, but not everybody. This is the one match where the two participants, I actually feel like I have somewhat of a vested interest. I actually give a shit about them. Hopefully they let these guys go out there and actually work a cruiserweight type of style match not some boring-ass AWA technical snooze fest from 40 fucking years ago, which they seem to be inclined to fucking do. Because you want to sabotage the division because you do it, so why not sabotage it? Yeah, that's right, because you're stupid. I'm looking forward to the Raw Women's Championship match. And it's very simple for this reason. I want to watch how this company wastes our time with this crap again. You know, the whole thing about Charlotte not being defeated on pay-per-view, being the queen of pay-per-view, that's one thing. But if you just lose on Raw, that doesn't help the whole title of being the queen of pay-per-view and not losing on pay-per-view. Then eventually you're just programming your audience and conditioning your audience to say, we know what's going to happen. She's going to win a pay-per-view and she's going to lose on TV. This is stupid. But as with so much that they've done with that women's division on Raw, uh, throughout 2016, having the same two feud for fucking ever and the feud that never ended. Um, what else would I expect? I'm curious to see how this company is going to waste our time with this shit again. 
And if anything else, it gives me something else to crap on in the lead up to WrestleMania. So I'll take it. I'm really excited about Samoa Joe's WWE pay-per-view debut, though. I'm glad Samoa Joe finally got the call up to the main roster. Probably later than it should have been, but at least he's fucking here. And I still think it's cool, after so many years of bringing guys in and sitting there and forcing them to change their names and trying to go away from part of what helped them get over on their own in other territories, independent scenes, so on, they actually let guys like AJ Styles come in under the name AJ Styles. They didn't try to make him like Jack Stevenson. You know, because even you think about uh, Daniel Bryan, he's Brian Danielson. They didn't let him come in under Brian Danielson. They forced him to change it to Daniel Bryan. That's dumb. Who cares? Oh, we want to own the rights to the licensing of the name, and we want the trademarks, and <clears throat> you're dumb. Get over it. So, so it, it, it's a treat to me that they allowed somebody like Samoa Joe to actually keep the Samoa Joe name. That is a positive influence you could directly attribute to Triple H. Because why all of a sudden did this shit just start happening? It coincides with Triple H getting more power within the company. So this is one good change that he has put in place. And I'm really going to enjoy watching him destroy that whiny blocking bitch Uber driver who I shall not name. The only way this match can go, the only way this match should go, is Samoa Joe should dominate early, he should dominate often, and Sami Zayn shouldn't be able to do shit. I just named him, fuck him. No halluva kicks, no dumbass shit over the top rope, because at the end of the day, if you do that and you make this a competitive match, it doesn't get the Uber driver any more fucking over, and it most certainly, more importantly, doesn't get Samoa Joe any more fucking over. It gets him over less. If you want to benefit Samoa Joe, and at the same point in time benefit the fucking Uber driver, then you do what you really technically should have done with the last man standing match that the Uber driver had with Braun Strowman. You can say, well, Braun Strowman dominated a good portion of it, yes, but the Uber driver got a way too much fucking offense, and they actually left you thinking that he could actually beat Braun Strowman, and that's fucking ridiculous. You completely negate that here by having Samoa Joe dominate from bell to fucking bell. And the whole premise of what you do here with the Uber driver is to once again sell the fact that he can take a shit kicking. And that he keeps coming, and he keeps coming, and he keeps coming. And he's not good enough because he fucking sucks. But he keeps coming, and he keeps coming. And there's something that could be appealing to that. In the fact that the guy is tough. The guy can take a legit shit kicking. The guy doesn't give up. It's a very natural way to build up a baby face. Very effective way to build up a baby face. Having him get some shine in this match is fucking stupid. Having him get to a situation where he gets a couple near falls on Samoa Joe is fucking stupid. The only way this should go down is that the creator's new chosen one to destroy your Samoa Joe should absolutely obliterate the Uber driver, and that will actually benefit both of these dudes. From a sick sadistic standpoint, though, the match I'm really looking forward to the most on this card is Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. So many people now, they boo Roman Reigns, yet cheer Braun Strowman. I've already done a video about how stupid I think that is. But I do want to see what the crowd reaction is going to be to this. Now that these two are actually facing each other in a match, is it going to play out that Braun's the overwhelming baby face and Roman's working as a heel but working as a face? Um, or does the crowd try to hijack the match and crap all over the match? I guess we'll see what ultimately happens. But to me... This match is all about the finish. Because having Roman Reigns win clean is a lose-lose situation for the Roman and Strowman characters. Because you're just further validating if Roman wins clean that he's seen a 2.0. And you're just saying with Braun Strowman, it didn't really matter when he faced somebody that mattered. He couldn't get the fucking job done. He's just a big dude. Why fucking take him seriously? But on the flip side of that, if you have Braun Strowman win clean here... And he goes over Roman Reigns like that. It's a lose-lose situation too. Because it doesn't really do you a whole lot of good to have Braun Strowman beat Roman Reigns at Fastlane. Just to sit there and potentially end up in something like the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania. You're not getting a big bang for your buck on the immediate ROI from having 
can beat Roman Reigns. Furthermore, especially if you're sending Roman Reigns towards the dead man at WrestleMania, the last thing you need to be doing is having a Braun Strowman beat his ass 100% clean. Because if that happens, then people will sit there and say, if he, can, if he couldn't beat Braun Strowman, why the fuck do I think he could beat the GOAT, the Undertaker? No. You can't do a clean finish here. You just can't. And if you do, it's stupid. This is the perfect opportunity to inject the Undertaker here, have him play interference, have him play a distraction, and either Braun wins because of that, and then you're really off to the races between Taker or Roman, or you get some type of distraction, and he just interferes, and there is no real finish at all. Those are the two real options you have, and they both revolve around the fucking Undertaker, period. Because otherwise, if you have Roman go over here, it's fucking dumb, and it hurts both characters. And frankly, if you have Braun Strowman go over clean here, it doesn't hurt Braun. It hurts Roman, but it's still stupid because it's not really going to benefit Braun, and it most certainly is not going to benefit Roman. It's all about that finish. It's all I care about in that match is the finish. Because that's what it's all about there. But ultimately, the thing that I'm really honestly most excited about is the fact that Goldberg is getting a shot at the WWE Universal Championship. He's going to be wrestling Kevin Owens for that title. And yeah, I want to see what happens. Uh, does the match last two minutes or longer? Uh, frankly, I don't know how you could have him do what he did to Brock Lesnar and then have this match against Kevin Owens not be a fucking squash. Unless you literally have Kevin Owens do what he said he was going to do, which was run and hide, and potentially get himself counted out or disqualified, then that's a different story. But you can't sit there and go into this with a 10 or 15 minute match, one, because it's Goldberg, and two, because of the way you built up Goldberg since his return. It would seem to slap in the face of so much logic, but again, we're talking about WWE here. So does this match even last two minutes? I think it's 50-50 odds at best at this point. Uh, does Chris Jericho potentially get involved if it does last a little longer? Does Brock Lesnar potentially make an appearance either during the match or after the match to really plant in the uh, fans' minds what they're going to see at WrestleMania? Uh, but, but above all else, and frankly, if most of the other crap on this show is crap, but I get that one shining moment for me of Goldberg winning the a world title in WWE one last time. That's all I need from this show. Even if I come on here and I do a review and I rant and rave a bitch about several other things, at the end of the day, and this is the whole trick to WWE, how they continue to suck people like myself and others in, is to give you that one redeeming quality that fools you into thinking you can get more of it. But Goldberg holding that title would mean something. And it would mean, in part, kind of a, a makeup for how badly I think his whole run was botched from 2003 to WrestleMania 20. Um, I think it makes up for the fact that he was gone for over a decade. Uh, I think it just makes up for a lot of things. And it really makes up to me, in part, not completely, but it makes up for them kind of crapping on Sting. Like, you bring Sting back, send him at God, just so that way he can do the honors for God at fucking WrestleMania. That's dumb. At least here you bring up another WCW legend, and yes, he'd been with the company before, so it's slightly different, but at the end of the day, he had been gone over a freaking decade. He had been gone a freaking decade plus. And now he comes back, and he squashes Lesnar in very short order at Survivor Series, eliminates him in quick order at the freaking Royal Rumble. Now to come here and potentially have him win the world title, to me it wouldn't matter what it's setting up to, and it wouldn't matter if it he ends up having to drop the strap to Lesnar at WrestleMania, or they do some squirrely shit with that match, and he drops it the next night on Raw. I wouldn't even care. Just having a few weeks of Goldberg being the champion and being able to trick myself into believing that this is what wrestling could be again. Just fooling myself into thinking that, you know, big badasses like this, these larger-than-life characters and personalities, can still permeate throughout professional wrestling would be enough to get me through the road to WrestleMania. Let's face it. I need something at this point, and this most certainly would help. I look forward to seeing Goldberg potentially hold this title, even if it's for a short time, and even if it leads to somewhere I really don't want him to lead to. It's kind of like The Rock winning the title in 2013. 
For that moment in time, it represented something meaningful and important to me, and that's what it represents here. And as much as anything else, that's why I'm excited for Fastlane. It's just a simple notion of Goldberg potentially being a world champion once again.